Hello and welcome to my channel, Exceedingly Good Reviews. This is my thought on video, my thought on NXT from October 28th, 2020. Halloween Havoc Edition. I was so excited for this show. I do apologise in advance here at the beginning of my video for the length of this video because I will probably babble about this uh, show a lot because I was hyped for this show. I was loving the fact that they were bringing back Halloween Havoc. Uh, so yeah, I'll give a quick run through of what occurred on the show and then give my overall thoughts on what occurred so we have the opening spooky opening creepy voice welcome to halloween Havoc. uh love the huge pumpkin at the beginning uh reminiscent of uh, the old wcw halloween havoc pay-per-views when they had the little demon monster holding a pumpkin uh, for the entrance uh, Shotzi uh, looks amazing with her outfit. She has uh, several outfit changes throughout. She looks like some kind of Frankenstein, Franken, the Mrs. Frankenstein monster. Uh, there's Elvira, I think that she's dressed as the Mistress of Darkness. Uh, and some red horned demon devil outfit as well. She, she has several uh, costume changes throughout the night. Our first match of the night, it's Damien Priest defending his North American Championship against Johnny Gargano, Mr. Takeover, Mr. Halloween Havoc, Johnny Gargano. Uh, Damien Priest gets a live uh, guitar performance for his entrance to the ring. Uh, really cool, really great. Uh, really, really uh, set the tone, really, really got you hyped, got you invested straight away into this show. Uh, everything was getting me invested into this show. There was nothing this show could do that would not get me hyped for it. Um, once Johnny Gargano comes out, he's dressed like... Uh, He's got a Jack Skeleton from uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas kind of uh, themed gear. So once he's in the ring, Shotzi announces that she'll spin the wheel to make the deal. She spins the wheel uh, to find out what the match stipulation is that they'll get. And they get the Devil's Playground match, whatever that is. We do get some rules. It's like no disqualification, no count out, balls count anywhere, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this was quite entertaining. The action for this match went all over the place. Obviously, it starts at the ring, goes to the ringside area, goes to the back. Uh, we end up going into the backstage area, back out to the stage setting and whatnot. Uh, this match went everywhere. Obviously, weapons did get involved. Uh, Johnny Gargano gets a kendo stick, so uh, Damien Priest has to go one better, doesn't he, and gets a uh, nightstick, a, 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 a police baton nightstick. Uh, you know, always going one better. Uh, you know, who brings a kendo stick to a nightstick fight? <laughs> kind of thing. Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> Gargano uh, super kicks the prop after it scares him. Yeah, yeah, that was quite a fun moment where Johnny Gargano uh, is looking in a coffin. There's a coffin uh, set up. He looks in it and there's a skeleton set up and uh, it freaks him out and he super kicks it. That was quite funny. Uh, like I said, it, the, the action goes all the way to the back stage area. Uh, it ends up, the action ends up going up to where the spin, the wheel uh, is set up. The, the wheel uh, prop, that's what's set up. The match goes up to the... Uh, Damien Priest throws uh, a trash can at Johnny Gargano's face. Uh, Johnny Gargano uses that trash can to uh, attack uh, Damien Priest with and absolutely completely flattens. He pancakes that trash can. When Damien Priest looks like he's getting on top, Ghostface, remember Ghostface, uh, the villain from Scream movies? Uh, he appears, or someone dressed as him, with a lead pipe attacking, uh, steel pipe attacking Damien Priest. Uh, this, uh, advantage, this gives the advantage to Johnny Gargano who uh, ends up sending Damien Priest flying off this uh, off, off the stage and through one of the crypt kind of things that is set up for the, one of the stage props. Uh, it looks like a crypt. He sends him through and it completely crumbles uh, after hitting him with a tombstone, a fake tombstone. Uh, sends uh, uh, Damien Priest flying. Johnny Gargano goes down, pins him and wins the match. Johnny Gargano is your new NXT North American champion and the first wrestler become a two-time North American champion. Congratulations, Johnny Gargano. That was nice to see. Uh, yeah, Wade Barrett, we see the commentators. Wade Barrett uh, is just dressed as himself. Uh, Vic Joseph is uh, dressed as Word Wally. That was quite funny, quite nice. I found Wally. Uh, Wade Barrett says, you know, I am dressed up. I'm dressed up as Bad News Barrett, and I've got some bad news for you. Uh, we get Cameron Grimes. Uh, he's talking to William Regal. He's worried about his match with Dexter Loomis. He doesn't want the match. You know, can he, can, can I forfeit the match? I don't want the match, Mr. Regal. And we then get Pat McAfee uh, uh, and um, Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan in the ring. Uh, Pat says, 
explains uh, everything that's gone on. Uh, that um, Adam Cole didn't congratulate him or anything from the match that they had at Takeover and all that. And there was still bitterness there. So Pat ends up hiring Ridge Holland to take out Adam Cole, which he did. But then Ridge Holland ends up getting himself injured. So then he decides, well, I'm going to hire the people that injured the guy that I hired. Hire? He is. Yeah. So he hires. Oh, it attempts to hire only Lork and, and uh, Danny Birch, but they refuse until they get knocked out of the tag team tournament. When they lose the opportunity at the tag team titles, then, then they reach out to Pat, and Pat hires them. And then Pat helps them win the NXT tag team titles. They've taken out all of, except for Kyle O'Reilly, all of Undisputed Era. So, yeah, that's all going on. Uh, he then explains that, uh, you know, well, he doesn't explain anything else. Kyle O'Reilly comes out. Kyle O'Reilly uh, is on his own, though. It's three people in the ring against Kyle O'Reilly. Pete Dunne's music hits. Pete Dunne, the bruiserweight, is here on NXT. He's back on NXT. Come across from NXT UK. I don't know how he got around uh, coronavirus lockdown rules and whatnot and quarantine and whatnot, but hey, hey oh, he's here, and, and it's great to see. Pete Dunne's here. He's bringing chairs to the ring. He hands a chair to Kyle O'Reilly. I don't get why he hands a chair to Kyle O'Reilly, because what occurs next is... Pete Dunne attacks Kyle O'Reilly with the chairs. He, he clobbers him, taking him down. Pete Dunne is with, with Pat, Oni, and Birch. Is this a new faction? Uh, Pat refers to them as the kings of the brand, kings of this brand. Is that what they're, they're going to be called? Is that their faction, the kings of the brand? The king, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they completely pummel and take down Kyle O'Reilly. And yeah, I've noted that. Has Pat got something for Brits? You know, uh, Rich Holland, a Brit, he hires him. Uh, only Lorcan is American, but Danny Birch is a Brit, and now he's hired Pete Dunne as well as a Brit. You know, has he got something for Brits? Who knows? <laughs> Watch out, all you Brits out there. Oh, sugar. I'm a Brit. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. We then get to see Cameron uh, Grimes again. Like I said, he, he wants to forfeit the match. William Eagle's adamant that no. He throws him out of the arena. When outside, a, a van appears. Uh, who gets out of the van? <laughs> Michael Hayes. Uh, in his uh, orange gear. Oh, God. Uh, Cameron Grimes reluctantly gets in the van uh, and the van speeds off to wherever his match will be taking place. Uh, we got our second match of the night. It's Jake Atlas taking on Santos Escobar, the interim NXT Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, Santos Escobar comes down with his cohorts, uh, Joachim Wilde and uh, Raul Mendoza, and they actually play into the finish. Uh, Raul Mendoza ends up clobbering uh, Jake Atlas with, I'm guessing, what was a loaded uh, lucha mask. Must have a weight or something in it that when he uh, hits Jake Atlas, uh, injuring Jake Atlas, giving the advantage to uh, Santos Escobar to pick up the victory. Santos Escobar wins here. Uh, yeah, um, Ember Moon. There's a video package for Ember Moon hyping her match with Dakota Kai, which will be occurring next week. Uh, Shot she says uh, in a new wardrobe. Uh, I think this one was Elvira, Elvira, uh, the Mistress of the Dark outfit, declaring that the uh, tree, uh, the Haunted House of Terror match is next. I keep wanting to say Tree House of Horror. But that's Simpsons. Uh, haunted House of Terror match will be next. Uh, so our third match is the Haunted House of Terror match. The the van arrives at the haunted house. Uh, with Cameron Grimes, he reluctantly en enters. You see uh, uh, Dexter Loomis stalking him. He's up a tree at one point. Then when uh, Cameron Grimes is in the building, in the haunted house, uh, you see Dexter Loomis slowly coming in and whatnot, looking around. Uh, there's lots of ghouls and ghosts and creepy things going on in the house. There's a, a zombified ref. There's zombified ladies. At one point, Cameron Grimes uh, locks himself into the bathroom and he realises there's a lady in the shower. He's like, ooh. So Cameron Grimes starts stripping off, you know, oh, I didn't realise Dexter Loomis had a sister. That sister, if it is indeed his sister, is not the nicest of ladies that you want to get to know. Uh, she's a creepy ghoul, creepy zombie Dexter Loomis sister. Uh, Cameron Grimes goes crazy, he tries to escape. Dexter Loomis and Cameron Grimes do have a bit of a brawl here or there, but ultimately Cameron Grimes gets away and is running away from this haunted house. And I don't blame him. Who wants to go into a haunted house? Well, a lot of people actually, paranormal investigators and whatnot, and me. I wouldn't mind going to a haunted house. But anyway, that's besides the point. Cameron Grimes doesn't want to be in a haunted house, and he decides, I'm legging it. So he's gone. Fourth match of the night, it's Rhea Ripley taking on our Raquel Gonzalez. These two powerful, large ladies. It's intimidating ladies. I would not want to meet them in a back alley somewhere. And they show their power, they show their strength, they're battling around the ring. 
uh, you know, they're going blow for blow, big move for big move, slam, slam, whatnot. Ultimately, Rhea Ripley does end up getting the victory. Uh, Rhea hits the riptide impressively and pins Raquel uh, to win the match. Good for you, Rhea Ripley. What's next for you going forwards? Cameron Grimes is he running. Uh, it's, it's hinted that he's running back to the arena. Vic Joseph still wearing the words Wally Alpha. Love it. Uh, Cameron Grimes is then seen at ringside. He's made it back to the arena. He's in the arena. Uh, and these girls have followed him. These girls are uh, all around him. He ends up getting into the ring. He does a cave in on one of the girls, I think, one of these zombies. Uh, Dexter Loomis gets in. They have a little bit of a scuffle back and forth. And uh, Dexter Loomis ends up locking in his uh, cross face, uh, thingy jacket, submission choke hold that he's got. Uh, Cameron Grimes passes out. Dexter Loomis gets out of the ring. All the uh, zombies are surrounding Cameron Grimes in the ring. The lights go out. And we just get a graphic. The end. So I'm guessing. Um, I'm chalking that up as a Dexter Loomis win, is that? Yeah, there was no pinfall, but Cameron Grimes was, did pass out, so yeah, we'll, we'll class that as a Dexter Loomis win. Dexter Loomis wins that match. Uh, we get a cool video package for Candice and uh, Io uh, for the main event. Tommaso Ciampa has a little video package as well, uh, explaining that, uh, you know, Dream is a dead man. He doesn't recognise NXT anymore with all these new individuals and everyone wanting this and wanting that do, do they deserve it have they warranted it and whatnot uh and basically he's it, 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 this was all around he's coming after uh velveteen dream fifth match of the night it's the nxt women's title match it's candice larray challenging io shirai the nxt women's champion for the belt uh they both come out to the ring io shirai is sung to the ring by poppy uh, poppy x i think is it uh she's uh, so that's quite nice uh Candice LeRae sporting the Sally uh, attire from Nightmare Before Christmas. It fit in with Johnny Gargano's and Jack Skeleton. Sally and Jack. So, uh, yeah, that was quite nice. And uh, so, all that's left is for Shotzi to spin the wheel. She does so, and it's the TLS match. Now, I kept saying, is it a tables, ladders, and stretches? That doesn't go. What it is, is a tables, ladders, and scares match. And obviously, tables, ladders, and scares, chairs. It does go, it fits. So, a tables, ladders, and scares match. You see the referee uh, putting the uh, belt onto a hook to hoist up off the ring because you've got to ascend the ladder to claim the title. Uh, they're quickly to it. They're quickly getting chairs, getting uh, tables, getting ladders. Uh, quite a lot of impact, quite a lot of uh, fun, exciting spots in this match. Uh, suplexes onto chairs. I mean, EO sets up a load of chairs and at one point she's got Candice laid on these chairs. So Eo goes up to the top rope to hit her moonsault. Candice rolls out the way. Eo slams down on those chairs. Ouch. That's got to hurt. Uh, Eo lands on the chairs. Ouch. Uh, Eo does a suplex on Candice onto a chair that's set up. That looks like it hurt as well. Ouch again. Uh, Eo hits a ladder. The ladder's. Yeah, so like Candice sets up a ladder in the corner. Uh, she sends Eo into the ladder. Oh no. Uh, Eo goes for the ladder. Candice gets out of the way and Eo hits that ladder. Eo on the floor, ladder falls on her. Ouch. Uh, Eo ends up twisting a chair. She gets Candice's ankle locked into a chair and twisting the chair. Looks like she was trying to snap Candice's ankle. That was another fun moment. Uh, Candice ends up doing a, a twisted neck breaker, a reverse neck breaker onto Eo through the two tables that were set up on, at the ringside area. Uh, ouch again. Ghostface ends up getting involved in the match. Ghostface, who was involved in the uh, the first match, Johnny, helping Johnny Gargano, attempts to help Candice LeRae here. Yeah. He helps. He picks up uh, Candice after the table spot, carries her into the ring and carrying up the ladder. No, 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 not on Shotzi Blackheart's watch. Shotzi gets in the ring and takes out uh, Ghostface. We don't realise, we don't know who Ghostface is. We don't know at the end of the night who Ghostface is. And uh, my assumption will be, I'll let you know in a bit. But, yeah, so Shotzi's equalised the match. Io uh, Shirai gets back in the ring, battling again with uh, Candice, pushing Candice uh, off the ladder. She tips the ladder. There's a ladder set up on the outside uh, between the ring and the announce table. Candice hits that hard snap straight through. It looks like she hits leg first. I hope she's not injured from that fall because it would look like a nasty fall for her. Uh, and that ladder snaps in half, uh, leaving Io to ascend the ladder and... Uh, Capture 
her NXT Women's title, to retain the NXT Women's title. She's seen celebrating uh, with the belt at the top of the ladder. You see Johnny Gargano coming out to attend to his wife, uh, which is understandable. Like I said, that looked like a nasty bump. So that ends the night. Uh, Io Shirai retains the NXT Women's title. So, yeah, my overall thoughts. I'm trying to be objective here because I love Halloween Havoc shows. This was a great show. I mean, I want to say it was a phenomenal show and an exceptional show. But I've got to say that, would that be, is that just because it's Halloween Havoc and I love the Halloween Havoc show, the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view? Possibly. So I've downgraded it to, a, it was a great show, a well worth a watch. Uh, my belter of the night, my belter of the night, it's hard between the first and the, and the last match. Uh, there were five matches on the card. That first match was great. And the last match was great, so it's really hard. Can I do a tie? Can I do a belt tie? Can both matches be a belt at my belt of the night? Possibly. If I have to edge it, then I'll give it to the first match, the NXT North American Championship match, just because the title change hands. And I do like to see a title change. I did think after the first match, Johnny Gargano went, I thought Candice is going to win the last match, and we're finally going to get that power couple, uh, Candice and Johnny, posing with the, both belts. But we didn't get that, unfortunately. Uh, however, yeah, th th it was a great, great show. Ghostface, who do you think it is? Let me know in the comments. My assumption is that it's Austin Theory. I, I reckon it'll be Austin Theory. Austin Theory sided uh, now with uh, Johnny Gargano and, and Candice. Either that or it'll be Robert Stone. And uh, the Garganos have joined uh, the Robert Stone brand. You know, it's not exclusive to just women, is it? The Robert Stone brand. So why can't Johnny Gargano join it? Uh so, yeah, it's a toss-up between them. I'm leaning more towards Austin Theory. With Austin Theory quitting the other week, after Austin Theory had had his match with Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano did look back at Austin Theory as if he was quite impressed by it. So, uh, could there be some kind of alliance there? I think that's the more plausible, the more realistic option. But it could be Robert Stone. That would be quite interesting if it was Robert Stone and see what they do with that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll give my belt of the night to, um, to uh, the North American Championship match. The Haunted House of Terror match, now that was great. It's a shame it didn't stay within the Haunted House of Terror that it ended up making its way back to the uh, arena. I would have liked to have seen it just stay that. Like um, at the Boneyard match at WrestleMania between Undertaker and AJ Styles, it just stayed in that location. I would have liked the Haunted House of Terror match to have stayed at that location. It's the Haunted House of Terror, but yet the match finished in the arena, in the uh, Capital Wrestling Centre, so, you know. Overall, though, yeah, like I said, it was a great show. I mean, I want to say it was better. There was a moment, a really funny moment, and I, I, I forgot to say, is that when Drake Maverick is dressed up as a Hollywood Hogan, uh, there's a, a guy dressed up as a mummy, a guy dressed up as, I'm assuming it's Andre the Giant, uh, dressed up, they end up squishing uh, Drake Maverick. And then the Shockmaster comes in. It's Killian Dane dressed as the Shockmaster. But Drake's, you didn't do that right. Uh, the Shockmaster's tripped up. You're meant to trip up. When Drake puts the helmet on, Drake does trip up. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was quite a funny moment. But yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to go on with Pat, Pete, uh, Danny, and Oni. Uh, see what kind of things they're going to do with that faction now. Uh, the new faction on the block. You know, are they the kings of the brand? Kings of this brand, whatever. Let's see what their name will be, and uh, I'm intrigued to see that. Uh, and yeah, I'm intrigued to see. Uh, what goes on next week? Next week, uh, our announced matches are Champa against Velveteen Dream, and uh, we've got uh, Dakota Kai taking on Ember Moon. So those two matches will be very entertaining matches. But yeah, like I said, this was a great pay per view. I loved it. I loved the show. I loved the effects. I loved uh, the opening. I loved uh, how they kitted out the arena and everything. So yeah, I want to give it higher, but objectively, I really shouldn't. It was just a great show. Well worth a watch on my belt of the night. The North American Championship match to open the night. Those are my thoughts on NXT Halloween Havoc. I hope they do more of these. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends. Uh, I just want to say one final thing. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Stay classy.